So what supports this skeleton? We know the skeleton is not strong. It's hung. When you take an anatomy class, the skeleton is rolled in on some kind of hanger. So the skeleton itself is not strong. It's what holds the skeleton up. So I'm going to propose to you a model that I affectionately call the soda pop can model of postural support. And this was a model that I developed in graduate school. So the can is only strong when it's closed, which means the aluminum is not what gives it strength. What gives it strength? Okay, it's pressure. It is just basic physics. The force is exerted upon it, not as great as the force is coming out. That means the manufacturer can use a very, very thin layer. Not like a can of peas, which has a much thicker sheet of aluminum. You can use a very thin sheet of aluminum for pop because the internal pressure prevents that metal from collapsing. You know if you see it with a collapsing, you know the pop is already out, right? Occasionally you get a, in your case of pop, you'll, you'll get one that's been pierced. So it's the pressure that creates functional strength to an otherwise weak external structure. And what I'm proposing to you is that our trunk is very much like a can of pop. So head, arms, legs. This is our trunk. What's this? OK, that's the diaphragm. The diaphragm is not a respiratory muscle. Hey, don't just write that down. <laughs> Especially, has anyone not taken their state boards? OK. I was going to say, because if you haven't, if they ask you that question, answer yes, the diaphragm is a respiratory muscle. <laughs> but for the purposes of this presentation, no. That's where we get in trouble. We labeled the diaphragm a respiratory muscle, therefore, we have negated all of its other important roles. The diaphragm is the body's major pressure regulator, respiration is one of its jobs. It's the body's major pressure regulator. What page do we have for Five. Its job is to completely separate the cavity above, the thoracic cavity, from the cavity below, the abdominal cavity. Hence, its movements relative to the two cavities will create pressure changes. You will always have a pressure change in both cavities. That's Newton's second law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when we talk about negative pressure, we must talk about positive pressure. But in addition to separating these two cavities, a can is three-dimensional, meaning it's got a top and it's got a bottom. I can't change pressures unless I have an intact bottom and an intact top. What is the top of the can? What regulates our pressure at the top of the thorax? Lungs. Not lungs, above lungs. The larynx, right. So we're looking at the vocal folds and glottal structures. Critical to maintaining subglottal pressure, not just for talking, not just for coughing, but for postural stability. The bottom should be easy, postpartum mothers. Pelvic floor, absolutely. So in this model, you have to look at the vocal folds as being directly related to the pelvic floor. 